Hey guys, we have got Mr. Brian, Mr. Nick from Spafford. Um, they are chilling, hanging out in their, in their, I don't know, where are you guys hanging out right now? Where are you at, Brian? I am at my house in Chandler, Arizona. Okay, and you, Nick? I am in my living room in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, all right, so how far apart are y'all actually right now? Like four miles, five miles, really, <laughs> realistically, okay. not even. All right, so you're following yeah. that social distancing quite well. Yeah. Um, but I miss her. I bet, man. Yeah. I like. Can y'all get close enough to air hug each other? What? What? How? That's actually a question I've got. Is like, how far? How great are y'all following the social distancing? That's that's one of the first ones right off the top I want to go with. I mean, for us, as soon as you know, I I feel lucky that we were you know in this in this industry because we were on the kind of the front lines of this whole thing we were one of the first you know businesses to be kind of pulled because you know we were that's our job is to get people to come together so you know being out in colorado um that's what the main worry was was getting together and bringing people together in the same room not only for our own health but for the for the the healths the healths of like all the fans too and um it was you know like so as soon as we came home, it's been a couple of weeks, but we've been, we've been social distancing before it even came out in Arizona. It only dropped like the other day that they implemented the stay, stay at home or the shelter in place. So did y'all end up make, did y'all end up pulling the switch on some of these shows first, or was it some of the promoters and venue owners on their side that said no more shows who, who kind of made that call first? It was, there was like, there was some hesitation between some of the promoters and then us, um, you know, that's basically what it came down to. But I, I think it was just a unanimous decision in the end of, of everybody that this was not, not the right call, you know, to go in and push forward with these shows. So, um, yeah. Okay. All right. Nick, anything to add? Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was a lot of, a lot of, uh, meetings and conferences and talking about what was going on and trying to come to a consensus that was the best for everybody involved you know <clears throat> and it was a really difficult call to make we were not super stoked about it you know um you know we still had about 10 shows left on our last leg of our winter tour and we were supposed to be in Portland and, you know, Washington and Northern California. And I was really stoked to get out there and play some shows, man. But, you know, we, we came to the consensus that it was for the best of the fans and for the best of us and our families to, to, uh, to go home and stay inside. Right. And then the weird thing was we came home and stayed inside and nobody else was staying inside. Right. And we were like, what the heck, what the heck's going on? Right. Is that, so was there a struggle with that? Was it like, could we go squeeze in one more show? No, I mean, by that time, we were already done with the whole thing. Like, you know, this this thing was already out, and we weren't trying to gather, you know, or get people to gather. So um, we wish we could be playing shows. This is what this is what we were born to do. But right. um, under these circumstances, it's, you know, it's not safe to go do them right now. So sure, sure. So and 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 you know, obviously, under normal circumstances, I would I would hate to 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 railroad an entire interview around one topic. But obviously, it is the biggest thing going on in our country, biggest thing going on in music right now too, or the lack of music. But this you know this health crisis that we're in. So right. you know, worst case scenario, we get to the end of the year. There's there's been no summer tour. There's been no fall tour. Can you guys throw together some kind of strange New Year's Eve show for us? Can y'all? Can y'all Zoom a, a live performance for us? Can y'all stand 12 feet apart and play a show for us? Have y'all even thought about anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, you know, if, if we can all stay clear and, and, you know, be as cautious as we need to be, um, you know, we definitely plan on, on trying to get together and make it work to do some live streams. Um, I think right now, just at the height of everything and, and all the kind of information that's out there and the kind of confusion that's in our own camp about some certain things, it's best to just lay low and, you know, work on 
you know, us as individuals um, for a little bit, you know, and music as individuals um, before we, we try and get together and, and start playing again. It's probably the smartest thing for us to do is just to kind of abide by this for the moment, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, if everybody's staying, cl staying clear of this, then yeah, we definitely plan on, on getting together and doing some doing some streams and um, you know, we have, we're trying to find some spaces. Some people are reaching out to us and giving us some spaces that we can go into. And, you know, there's a lot of people that want the music. So, um, you know, we have great support from a lot of our fan base and, and friends and, and, you know, uh, local family and stuff like that, that can help us out. So, um, when the time comes, we'll be able to jump in and all that and take advantage of it for sure. I think that's definitely what we wanted to hear. You know, I mean, everybody is, is itching for music. I haven't photographed a show in like seven weeks. It's killing me. Um, but uh, thanks I for your people Don't understand necessarily is like, yeah, they want the music. That's great. But we're the ones that have to, you know, all our gear is in the storage unit and half of it is in my garage and half of it is in Red's garage because we, we cut the tour short. So we let go of our rehearsal space before we were supposed to pick up one around April 4th or April 5th when we got back home. And, uh, you know, since we cut the tour short, we didn't have a space to bring everything to. So our, our bus and, and trailer and everything got offloaded into Red's place and my place. And, you know, we got to go grab the van, grab the trailer, go to the storage unit place, pick up the stuff, you know, like it's a lot of touching things and maybe some interaction with some other people and this and that. And it's like the whole thing makes some, you know, make some of us feel a little awkward about it. So, you know, once we get a little bit more information about all this, um, will we feel that like it's maybe it's not as much of a risk, but right now I don't want to be part of the problem, sure. uh, you know, and, and it's just, like I said, with, with, with my lack of comprehension of this whole thing, I'm like, I don't really know what's going on. I'm not really sure, you know? And right. so like, let's just chill. You know, there's no rush, like, right now with anything, um, you know, just because the fan wants the music. Like, yeah, we want to play the music. That's the reason why we do this. You know, you guys are you guys are the listeners, and that's great. But we're, do we do it for ourselves as well? Like, you know, we, we have that itch, man. Like, we just want to play, um, you know, and having the audience is, is, is great. It's, that's the blessing of this whole thing. Um, so when the time comes, we'll definitely – we'll do it, and we'll hit it hard, man. I mean – I'm sure the music that comes out of us is going to be some pretty amazing stuff. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, and speaking of the audience, um, Spafford's fan base is just an incredible people, extremely devoted, very loving, very inviting people. And no doubt fuels, you know, a whole lot of what happens on that stage. One thing I've seen is, you know, with the, the few shows that y'all have been live streaming on Facebook, um, there's a lot of interaction between y'all and the fans in the thread, they seem to be eating that up. It, it seems like y'all are having fun with it. Um, so, you know, props on that. Thanks for these live streams. But who who's choosing which shows to play? You mean as far as these live streams that, or these uh, right, right. video premieres that we've premieres. been doing? Yeah. Right. I mean, it's always, it's always a, a group consensus, you know? Um, I think as far as those, we just wanted to get those most recent shows out um, because we had some really nice video footage from um, 10 Mile Music Hall and Schmiggity's. So we just wanted to get those out, but we always have a group consensus on it. And, um, you know, we try our best to capture the best content from each show so that we can you know, listen back to it and look back at it and re-experience the show ourselves and then, you know, put it out if, if need be. Uh, okay, excellent. Yeah, we kind of we kind of lost our videographer on, on this last tour. So before we went out, we wound up picking up a bunch of GoPros. Um, and Jordan is kind of the, the tech media content kind of guy. He, he loves wrapping his head around all that, how all that stuff works. And, and, and he's like, let's just get some GoPros. And I'm like, yeah, all right, let's get them. So we got a bunch of GoPros and a nice little case for them and set them up every single night. And, you know, unfortunately, some of the, the cameras weren't on sometimes. There was a little bit of a, a learning curve there with some of them. Sometimes they didn't record. I think in Frisco, one of the nights, like, 
the cable came unplugged, like one of the fans like spilt a beer in an outlet that was like on stage they unplugged the camera so it, it just slowly like died you know like weird shit like that happens um but yeah i mean this is this is all we've got for the most part you know so um we're trying to release everything that we have it, it will come to an end at, at some point you know but sure. we still have you know a good amount of shows to release and, and jordan is working tirelessly um to get these out and we're trying to like space them out a little bit to let them last you know through these times so you know, that coupled with a, a whole bunch of other releases and stuff that we're working on, we're hopefully going to just keep us floating through these times, you know? Right. So are y'all still talking daily, weekly, the, 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 the group as a whole still talking music daily or weekly? Are y'all doing it in this format? Is it phone? Is it text? Um, what, what, so does, does this kind of be in lockdown, do you find it affecting creativity to a positive side, a negative side, a little bit of both? Um, is anybody feeling a little bit of cabin fever just with their creativity? I think we're all, we're all so incredibly creative that we've all adapted in our own unique ways since being home and, uh, you know, figured out how to be creative in, like for me particularly, like I live in an apartment on the second story in Phoenix. So, and I'm a drummer. <clears throat> so that poses, you know, some challenges, but you know, I talk to my roommate Chuck and talk to my neighbors downstairs and set my little practice kit up in the living room and, um, you know, set some, electronic synthesizers up and tied it all together with a little mixer and have just been just been playing along with stuff you know um and also trying to like do some videos and taking my own personal videos and posting them on social media and whatnot so brian's been taking videos of him playing some new songs on the guitar and red did a really cool cover of a bob dylan song and Jordan's taken a, did a cover video of him playing bass and guitar and um, we're all definitely staying very busy. That's for sure. Um, it's, it's not like, it, it's not exactly that we know what to do in these times, you know, like our job, you know, like the, the heart of our work is, is out there on the road. That's comfortable. This, this for me is, is somewhat uncomfortable being forced in this position to, you know, when I come home off the road, I'm always sitting here and practicing, you know, but in the back of my mind, you know, I got that show in seven days or, you know, 13 days or, or 20 days even, you know, I'm, I'm ready and I can kind of like fill out my weeks until, you know, until I'm going back out on the road. But now that I don't have that trip plan, I don't know when that next show is. And um, yeah, I think that, you know, I do have a little bit of cabin fever with, with the whole thing. And, you know, some days I, I'm downright, depressed you know I mean some days I have this like major anxiety that uh, that overwhelms me and I and I'm not too creative um you know sometimes that anxiety does lead in, into something and I I said I got my a little looper pedal here um and I just and I got my this is my 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 recent sheet you know of yesterday of of just writing down a whole bunch of chord progressions and stuff and, um you know I'm trying to just whatever's coming out, I'm trying to just like record it at this time, okay. um, you know, and trying to just have, you know, something of it um, and let it be part of that archive and, you know, some, and that's how some things flourish into more songs and stuff like that. So um, yeah, between like trying to write new stuff or, you know, practice my own stuff that I was, that I'm always practicing and, um, we've been given lessons lately. So that's taken up like a quite a bit uh, amount of time. Can you, you expand know? on that a little more? Um, yeah. I mean, as soon as we got back, I, I reached out to, to my Instagram and just, you know, threw up that I was, I was doing some lessons and I got a good amount of people that were, that were interested in taking lessons. So, you know, I signed these folks up and we've been going, this will be like our fourth week now, um, this next week coming up. And, and what, what format are you using for that? I'm using Skype just one-on-one okay. -on -one, and um, it's been great. I got some of my old students, uh, you know, from when I used to teach back in the day. Nice. Now uh, I'm working with them, a good buddy, uh, Drew Alhoff in, in San Francisco. 
And it's great to have him back because he's like one of my more advanced students. Um, and I love teaching all, all levels of it. Um, but he's always been one of my favorite students I've, I've ever had. And uh, he was one of the first people to kind of jump in here. And I didn't pick and choose kind of who, you know, it was a first come first serve sort of basis. Okay. Um, and I'm sure some people will like drop off at some point because that's just what happens with lessons. And that's why I wanted to get out of it in the first place, because, you know, you, you think that it's a source of income, but all of a sudden that week, everybody cancels on you because they got to do something else, you know, and right. uh, it's not very steady, you know, but um, okay. yeah, it's this seems like it might be one of those opportunities where your phone might ring a little more for that. I'm, I'm seeing on social media, people saying, you know, I picked up a guitar for the first time in 20 years because I'm stuck at home. I'm, I'm seeing posts like that. People are writing poetry that, that hadn't, that hadn't picked up a pen in you know, X amount of years. And so it, it seems, uh, it just, whatever was the norm, it, you know, the abnormal is kind of taking over. And so, uh, that, that's interesting. And that was, you know, it was one of the things I really wanted to clue in with y'all on is just like, um, has there been, can, can you tell us, has there been anything new, uh, anything new laid down that y'all would call an official song that obviously hasn't been played yet? Yeah. I mean, I finished a song just recently called simple mysteries that I finished with, um, Chuck and Jared in, in the back of the bus on this, this winter tour, but, um, and was playing it a couple times and, in soundcheck and you know never really got the full band on it yet but i think they've heard it like kind of enough times at this point you know heard me messing around with it backstage or on stage or you know even in the back of the bus and um you know and then i came home and i was like all right i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lay down the first version of this so that version got put on um on our the the spafford instagram you know just last week um jordan's released a couple uh, grooves and a couple songs on the bass that you know he's got a title to he's got the working title to it and it's like okay this is like set in stone this is you know not just like kind of like an idea anymore it's it's somewhat finished you know it's ready for us to do our job um, and our obligation you know when somebody else writes the song and, and play your part and do the best uh, you know instrumentation that you can do for it so I'm getting ex excited to work on some of those songs as well um, I like all forms of it. I like writing the songs and giving it to people. And then I like having a song come my way and being like, oh, great. You know, like no pressure, but but also, you know, all the pressure to just make it sound good and like, you know, try and find out what that person wanted it to sound like, you know. Um, so that's always fun. I, I like all the challenges with it. Nick, you got you got anything there? Well, that's one of the coolest parts about playing with Brian and Jordan and Red is that <clears throat> each of them are such unique songwriters in and of themselves and they express their personalities through their songwriting and through their instruments. And uh, I try to do that too. I'm not a songwriter. However, I, you know, I get to express my personality through my drums and how I apply that to a song. And uh, it's just really fun and challenging. So I really love this new song that Brian wrote with Chuck and Jared and um, I can't wait to get into the practice room and, and rock some drums to it. The Chuck helps us out with, right. It, Chuck is a quite talented poet. Um, Chuck Johnson, Chuck Spafford Johnson. Sure. Um, the namesake of the band. And, um, he, I mean, he co co-wrote the lyrics to that song, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had like, you know, a bunch of stuff scribbled down and, and, you know, I sent Chuck like a, like a demo, like a long time ago. Um, and we tried to unravel like some of the things that I was saying in it. So then he had like this list of, you know, some things that was what I was saying or wasn't what I was saying. And, and then we sat down and we kind of all, um, you know, we were just in the back of the bus that one night uh, and, and just sat back there and, and I was like, let's, let's do this, you know, and just whipped out the book and whipped out a pen. And, you know, like I work really well with like other people in the room, kind of like acting as like a muse in a way. Um, it's like really exciting. It's like a little school project, you know, and I was, I was like that sort of stuff. So it's like, you know, there's like this healthy competition of like wanting to get it right in a way. It's just, it's fun that, that collaboration and we're all thrown out ideas and some work and some don't. And, um, 
you know, but in the end it, it was, you know, everybody's collaboration on, on the rest of those lyrics for, for that tune. So, um, okay. yeah, that's how that kind of came together. Okay. Um, leaving, leaving the, the music room, what, what are you guys doing for fun right now? <laughs> fun? fun? Fun. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing to stay sane? What, uh, what's, what's, what's your mental health days look like? So I threw ladder ball by myself for about 15 minutes outside and got bored with that. Uh, <laughs> I, went, I went inside and I pet my cat. And then my wife was like, let's do a YouTube workout video. Yeah. So, so I, for 20 minutes, I was like, we're just doing a short one. And so for 20 minutes, we did this like high intensity. Th I'm sweating my ass off. Um, and yeah, here I am after it. So that's what I did today, at least. Okay. All right. Nick. I, I shaved myself a handlebar mustache. <laughs> All right. That's officially pretty awesome. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been doing a little workouts over here, too. I mean, as we're binge watching, you know, shows on Netflix, like um, we've been watching uh, this show called You, okay. which is super cool drama, murder, psychopath type of show so we've been binge watching that and um and just doing workouts squats and push-ups and all that stuff and um making videos with my drums which is really fun and like working with like a video editing software and like which i don't have any experience with and like recording the audio on a mixer and trying to like match it to the video recording and like doing split screens and like all this stuff that's been really fun just troubleshooting that and trying to figure out how to do that stuff um yeah it definitely like if i kind of like thrive when i'm out of my comfort zone okay. so having this change and this challenge has been like has been kind of cool so mentally i feel like i'm i've been doing really well like throughout this thing because i'm just like out of my comfort zone and um, so that's been really good. So uh, Nick, Brian, uh, would you be learning video editing software or working out right now if y'all were on the road? I wouldn't be doing video editing software, but I'd probably be working out a little bit. I do yeah, some, stuff. okay. I do some of that stuff, you know? Okay. All right. Nick, uh, would you, would I don't, I, I don't, I mean, when we're out on the road, man, I, I'm, We've hit the I'm doing, Yeah. <laughs> We've hit the gym yeah, on I'm, the road and the hotel. Yes, yeah, yeah, we have, and it's yeah. it, it's really good. But, dude, I'm do, I'm doing a two and a half hour workout when I'm on the stage every night. Right. So like, usually on the days off, like I'm I'm resting. Okay, um, guys, that's about all I had. Um, I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time, but I'm very appreciative of this and. Um, Everything, all the opportunities that you guys have made possible for my photography, Type 2 photography, and the, the countless uh, photo passes and opportunities to connect with y'all is hardcore appreciated. Um, our fans at jamsplus.com will no doubt enjoy watching this, and Spafford fans will no doubt enjoy watching this. Is there anything either one of y'all want to send out just to the fans right now, just anything off the cuff, something different, something weird, funny, whatever you got? I mean, we love you all and, and appreciate so much support, you know, through this whole thing. Um, I got hit up by a Spaffner today that was making some stickers for everybody and was going to donate, you know, that money, a portion of that money to the band. So, nice. um, Very you nice. know, that sort of stuff is like amazing. It's, it's unscripted, it's unprompted and, and like, you know, very highly appreciated. Um, so you keep it coming, you know, don't, don't worry, like we're not going anywhere. We'll survive through this thing. Um, you know, even if we have to start completely over again, like, you know, like we're not going anywhere. We, we live and breathe music. This is what we were born and bred to do. So, um, you know, you'll be getting some new music very soon and stay safe yourself and stay the fuck home basically right now because, you know, the better that we're all doing this together is, you know, the faster that this thing can be wiped away and we can all get back to some some bit of normalcy here so right right Nick, anything yeah, our, our 
I could have said it better myself, but our, our purpose is to share music with people. So that is what's always on our minds. So it's coming. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for your time, man. I hope you all have a great weekend and uh, we'll be in touch soon. All right. Thanks, Roger. Thanks. Yeah, man. Thanks, Roger. Bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs>